Hello and welcome to Cartoon Cosmonauts, a podcast all about animated short films and their creators. Each episode features a new guest giving us the lowdown on their approach to making animation. I'm your host, Joseph Orr, and a quick reminder that this podcast is available on all major podcasting platforms, as well as on YouTube as a video interview. So, on today's episode, I'm pleased to welcome special guest Deirdre Byrne. Deirdre is a visual artist from Wexford. Her work has been exhibited in Ireland and internationally, and her style combines painting with cut-out animation, and there are a whole host of animated drawings which you can find on her website. In 2021, she was awarded a commission to create a short animation that would be projected onto the exterior of the DLR Lexicon building in Dunleary. This short was called Passages, and it will be the main focus of our conversation today. It's a really fascinating combination of visual artistry and stop motion animation. So let's jump right in. Deirdre, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much, Joseph, for having me. Delighted to be here. Oh, it's great. And can I ask where in the world are you uh, broadcasting from at the moment? Um, well, right now I am in Seville in Spain. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So can, yeah. Divide my time between here and Ireland. And, uh, Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So I'd say it's nice uh, weather comparison. Would it be warm over there still at the moment? Or is um, it cold? It's getting cooler, but it's, I mean, it's still warm. Like it's still. Yeah. You're not, not having to throw the heating on like over here. Oh no, you would. You would. Oh, would you? Okay. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that's only it's, the temperature started to drop in the last couple of weeks, but it okay. still reaches like twenty degrees during the daytime. Okay. So when <laughs> so I'm that's... saying that people at home, they're just like, yeah, no, that's not. Yeah, yeah. When you have to say, yeah, it's not bad over here. It's twenty. <laughs> you're like, okay, that's 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 not the same over here. That's not yeah. our definition of it. Yeah, uh, that's great. Okay, so obviously we're here today to talk about your your animation passages. Mm -hmm. but it's quite clear from your work that your background is actually fine art yeah. which is a really kind of interesting route into into animation can you sure. talk a little bit about your your background in fine art and and how you got into it okay yeah well i i studied fine art painting in in ncad and i guess as a child i was always interested in in art and um both painting and drawing and then uh was always encouraged at home and in school to to do that and uh, so I studied yeah I went to NCD studied fine art painting um, and was that was that a couple of years that course or, or uh, it was, was a degree course it was four years long wow. so the first year was uh, you do a mixture of everything to try to figure out what you want to study and then the painting course was was for three years um, wow. and wow that sounds amazing yeah. It, yeah. for me because i i studied film in general and i remember okay. it was only a small part of animation which i absolutely loved and you know obviously it's easy to look back and go oh i wish i had done four years of pure animation but the idea of doing because i'm always so jealous of people's backgrounds when they're painted you know when it's not green screen the idea of oh, like getting yeah. to you know focus yeah. on that for that amount of time and is that yeah. do you do it generally you were saying in the first year and then you're kind of focusing in on, in on what you want to study yeah and first year which is called core you 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 do you can choose a bit of everything you do a couple of week blocks and then you decide which department you wanted to you want to go into okay and i wanted to do fine arts um and then you get more specific kind of towards the as you go along okay year. and then in, you do get a chance to try out the different departments like I did a bit of print and sculpture and media and that um, but actually I didn't do too much painting um in college like NCD is very ideas driven so uh, what I was focused on focusing on then was it was around the time of uh, when digital photography started and like Photoshop okay. and digital manipulation so that was Kind of where my work was was focused and um, I did Erasmus in Belgium and that was a great oh, experience wow. that was like the complete op opposite that was very traditional in its approach yeah where um, that's in Belgium was that in Antwerp oh yeah. wow brilliant brilliant yeah um so actually my tutor there was a painter uh, Pat Harris an Irishman who was teaching me there and that that's where I really learned a bit more about 
Oh, let's go. Such a small yeah. world going over there. And yeah, yeah. Being taught by an Irish person. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Um, but I think, like, so I think, you know, all of these experience, any of these skills that you pick up, like you, you learn along the way and you, you, you never know when you're going to use them. Yeah. Again, yeah. You know? So like, you, you know, in college, my work was very focused on, say, uh, more uh, digital photography and, and Photoshop. And then, you know, that's sort of what I'm using now to help me with the, the animation and that. And then. Brilliant. I love that there's that scope to kind of develop and like and for me as an outsider someone who's never done like a a, a fine art or, or paint I would yeah. have imagined it would all be quite traditional I love that there's that element of like you said like yeah. almost mixed media that you can kind of yeah, incorporate yeah. into both I, I wouldn't yeah. have imagined that at all oh uh, yeah 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 completely yeah yeah, yeah. which is great I suppose it yeah. makes sense because that's how kind of everything is going and it's kind of nice to inform that in but uh Brilliant. So it wasn't until later that you were really kind of focusing in on the painting kind of. Yeah, after and I just realized then then afterwards, like I love um making things and I you know, and I love painting and drawing. So then that's in my own practice, that's sort of where it led okay. into. You know, I still use Photoshop a bit more for editing images and with the with the animations, but really I just like my heart into making things and yeah, making them physically. Yeah. yeah okay brilliant and then so I suppose because that's the that's the thing that I stumbled upon you from was your your short uh, passages so yeah. what was your road then into animation because obviously you know there's there's so many links between art and, and animation and there's so many great examples but was there a, a particular project you were doing that led into animation or was it just something you were curious about and decided yeah. to experiment with uh I was well really it started from because I was making cutouts from uh, older paintings and drawings that I had done that I didn't really like how they turned out. So I started cutting up sections of, of parts. Oh, wow. Like. From your old paintings. Wow. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was one way to kind of reuse them yes. you know, rather than having them sitting in the corner or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just a sad <laughs> reminder. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just... But maybe, yeah, there'd be parts that I'd like. So I'd cut up um sections of those and then I would stick them onto drawings that I'd have of either landscapes or maybe there'd be figures in them and it was while I was I had a large drawing of a mountain and I stuck some or I had the cutouts these colorful cutouts in kind of geometric forms and I was playing with those on the paper trying to figure out a composition that I liked. Okay. Um, it was while I was moving them that I thought, oh, maybe it would look cool if I actually animated them through stop motion. And that's how I, I got into it. I looked Oh, up, wow. So it was yeah. just literally from kind of laying them out and exactly. almost trying to find where they would yeah. sit on the... Yeah, by accident almost, yeah. Brilliant, just... as, as most great things get discovered <laughs> by accident. Okay, that's amazing. And so did you have to like from that initial idea of kind of thinking oh, this is stop motion this is something I want to get into was there any kind of course or, or something you did or was it more just I'm going to go online research what I need to do and and just dive in myself oh yeah I just no I didn't do any course I looked up online um how to make a stop motion animation I didn't have any equipment or anything like okay. that so I I bought a camera Um, I well, I wanted to get one anyway for documenting my work. So I bought a um, DSLR camera oh, brilliant, and brilliant. then because the I wanted I wanted it because it had to be an overhead shot because there's yeah. so many small pieces that I wanted to move around. It needed to be an overhead shot, so I didn't have um, a tripod or the attachment like you can get an attachment for a tripod that helps you to do that yes I tried to do that myself before okay and when you just have a normal tripod there's only so high up you can go without getting you know the legs in shot or yeah you can't get it perfectly you know perpendicular it's just exactly kind of at an angle to get it so yeah. I've seen that attachment yeah that lets it kind of come out um, yeah yeah but it's knowing where to get it sometimes you're like 
Yeah, but so I didn't have any of that. So I, I kind of just cobbled together one a, a makeshift tripod with an attachment. I found a metal pole in a skip on the street that was perfect for what I wanted. Okay, and then brilliant. Just, I had a couple of stools and heavy books and a lot of duct tape. And I kind of made one of these for what I wanted. It's brilliant. I, I always love hearing <laughs> that kind of stuff because what's really nice about that, you have no idea of that when you see the finished thing. You know what I mean? When you see that yeah. finished movement, you, you have no idea if that was made in a studio or someone's basement or wherever it was. But I love hearing, yeah, I think a lot of people start out with that where they're like, okay, look, the, the ideal scenario will be to get a tripod. And then you see how much those tripods are and you're yeah. like, hmm, maybe I'll, yeah. maybe I'll tape something together. <laughs> exactly. There was a lot of duct tape involved. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then just blacked out the windows and um, got some lamps and um, that, that was it really. And just, and then just shot it on the, on my floor in the, in the flat. And Brilliant. And can I ask what, uh, what software you were using? Yeah, I was using um, Digicam Control, it's called. Oh, cool. It's an open source free software. Brilliant. I've never actually heard of that one, but I'm uh, yeah. always hear, curious to hear of like more open source things. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's still the one that I use today. It's just uh, it's just perfect for what I want to do. It's, you know, I don't want to shoot anything too complicated. So. And th did it cost much or? No, it's free. free. Oh, it's free. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Brilliant. Jeez, yeah. even better. And that, that's, yeah. again, that's what's great about, I, I've known some people who started out like myself using kind of apps yeah. either through a phone or tablet, which are free. And, and sometimes the free programs, they kind of are simpler and straightforward, which is a good thing because they give you just exactly what you need. You know what I mean? There's a capture button. Sometimes they have an onion skin or a kind of a toggle where you can move in between. And at the end of the day, that's all you really need. I mean, it's just to be able to kind of judge it. Yeah, Brilliant. exactly. And that's all I, I need it for. Like maybe down the line, if I want to do something more complicated, I'll get Dragon Frame or something like that. But for now, yeah, this works perfectly. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's what I love about hearing different people's stories is because at the end of the day, if you showed me, you know, everyone's finished work side by side, I couldn't tell you what software they used to yeah. make it. It's more about the, uh, uh, you know, the camera and then obviously the the actual subject, whether it's puppets or paintings or whatever it is. I think yeah. what what it's captured on matters less and less once you're kind of absorbed in the thing. So mm -hmm. um, no, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. So you you mentioned earlier on that you hadn't actually ever studied any animation. that You kind of just found it out, you know, step by step, looking it up yourself. Do you think yeah. now looking back that animation is something you would have liked to study or or possibly will in the future um don't know looking back if it's something i would have liked to have studied maybe i don't i mean I don't it's know. always a strange question isn't it would you yeah, do it all yeah. over again it's a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a twilight zone now? question <laughs> yeah <laughs> but do you think um, in the future because i know there's because of covid i've seen a lot of the top kind of animation studios especially stop motion have started yeah. doing online courses because I know Ardman do one now at the moment. Okay. Now it is, it's expensive as you would imagine, but yeah. there's more, it seems like accessibility out there. Whereas obviously Ardman, I think they, they only took applications from like three feeder schools in England initially. Right. Uh, whereas now I think online courses really opens it up to everyone. Yeah. Do you think you could see yourself doing something more with stop motion later? As you, as you go uh, well, along that sounds amazing possibly possibly i'd be open to it um, yeah, yeah, yeah you know and developing my skills I'd, I'd be interested in learning more about uh maybe doing more digital animation and combining say yeah it is i think it's incredible just with the amount of scope that's out there because like yeah. some people have, have spoken to you know they're purely digital and i've seen some irish uh animation companies at the moment that they make their sets uh out of like 3d you know it's a stop motion set but they animate their characters in 2d on top mm -hmm. of it wow. and there's so many cool like variations yeah. and, and that's what i really liked about your work was that you know it, essentially it's a, a like a painting a, a still image something that would 
you know, traditionally just hang on a wall in a gallery, but then you've animated these elements over it. And all of a sudden it just gives you ideas about, Oh, you know, there's so many possibilities out there and combinations. It's, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I suppose that actually takes us nicely onto your film in question uh, passages. And I suppose the main focus of this podcast is normally to take an artist and one film of theirs, because sometimes people can have multiple films and it's hard to cover everything, but I'm trying to get a, I suppose, an idea of your process by focusing okay. in on this, this one film. And for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, what I'll do is I'll leave links to it below in the description. So you could maybe watch it before. And if you haven't seen it and then kind of follow along as we, as we discuss. So mm -hmm. How did the idea for this project passages begin? Um, where where did it start? Well, Joseph, uh, there was an open call from Dunleary uh, Arts, Dunleary Rathdown County Council Arts Department for uh, to make a short animation about the county of Dunleary Rathdown. Um, so it was very okay. open and what? Yeah, I was going to say nice and broad. You're yeah, like, exactly. Mm. <laughs> Uh, so I approached it from the geographical context and I was, the county is, you know, it's really defined by, it has mountains and it has the sea. Uh, so I looked for the highest point in the county, which is the summit of Two Rock Mountain. Oh, wow. I didn't Two know Rock that. Mountain, yeah, Two Rock Mountain is, there's a Neolith Neolithic passage tomb and then there's a cairn. A stone cairn on top oh, of that. Oh, really? In Dunleary? Yeah, I never knew that. yeah, yeah. In the Dublin mountains. Yeah, yeah. Have you oh. ever been up there? Yeah. No, not into the Dunleary side of it. No. Yeah, and was yeah. that something you knew of previously, or or you came across? No, research? no. Um, I didn't know just from researching, just from researching, wow. and then um, visited the the site, and it's, yes, it's lovely. Yeah, and you can see the views of the Wicklow Mountains and Dunleary Harbour, you can see from there as well. Wow, almost actually a good idea for a, a, a trek there. It's crazy, isn't yeah. it? The things that you, you you feel like you live so close to, because I think for me, Dunleary is always the harbour. That's what I think mm -hmm. when someone says Dunleary, I'm straight away, I'm picturing those two lighthouses. Um, yeah. um, but uh, no, I had no idea about the mountains and the, yeah, yeah. the kind of burial um, tombs that were up there. Wow. Yeah. So... Uh, so that was the, that's one site. Um, so one of the images in the, the stop motion is well, there's there's two landscapes. So one of them is this, the mountain, the summit of the mountain, and then yeah. there is Dunleary Harbour. So it went from the highest point to sea level, and so it's the like an aerial view of Dunleary Harbour and the yeah. coastline there. And okay. then so the landscapes are still. And then there are moving, small moving elements, which are the paper cutouts are, are yeah. moving through. A lot of them. A lot that's of them. That's what I remember initially being like, I was like, you know, when you have to focus on a project and you're like, are they done digitally? And yeah. I was looking at them. And then I think in one of your descriptions, you'd, you'd mentioned using stop motion. I was like, oh my God. Because <laughs> I normally have like, if I have more than you know, two characters in a scene, I have like a little just tab sheet where I'm keeping track of, I start on the left. And I move each one that way. Yeah. But I think at most I've moved like maybe six characters in one scene. But I, I think object wise, sometimes you had maybe close to 50. I mean, that's just a guess, but it okay. seemed like a lot. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And we'll get to that later, but I can only imagine keeping track of all of them. Must have been like, <laughs> hmm, did I move that one? Yeah. And this this all fell under the the light up Dunleary banner is it is that what the overall project was going to be called? Exactly. Yeah. So the the light up Dunleary. Uh, festival or event took place at the in the middle of October, yeah. and there were five, five or six um, short animations which were commissioned by um, it was Creative Ireland funded it and the Mary County Council Arts Department they managed it and it was projected onto the Dunleary Lexicon. Building. Yeah, I've seen pictures of it. It looked incredible. Yeah. And is that something that when when you were applying for it? Was that what their end goal was? Like, were they oh, saying, yeah. we want this to be yeah, kind of yeah, projected? Because yeah. it must have had to be a particular um, aspect ratio, was it? Well, that's, yeah, I was going to talk talk a bit about that later. When, when Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, that, that seemed challenging. I saw it and I was like, wow, that's a, 
that's I've heard of letterbox and that's like I was stretched but uh, okay cool and I like that you went up to do like was that important to you you know research wise to go up to to Rock Mountain and take your own photos or just to kind of go up there and experience it a bit um yeah well actually when I when I started I I visited the to Rock Mountain after I'd uh, made the animation but, uh, so I used a lot of photos that I found oh, online yeah, yeah, yeah. on that and then it was it was afterwards that I had actually visited it so, gone up to see it okay yeah. just to see your work and and, and what, yeah, it, was, what it, was it inspired it. And then, yeah to see yeah nice afterwards and see what it uh, what it actually looked like but um and then can I ask with these two so that's a nice I suppose set up for it and and uh, I share your sentiment with sometimes when there's a such a broad open call it's hard to like you know you're like oh yeah I can do it on anything and then anything becomes uh, sometimes a negative you know oh, quite yeah. you know you get a like what will I do it on was that sure. was that an easy like a decision for you when you started out that like I'm going to do it on these kind of geographical locations or had you tossed around kind of many ideas before that or it was like no I know what I want to do from the start I think I think it came pretty early on once I decided that I wanted to have to have these two two landscapes and I had an image in my head of what I okay. wanted it to look Perfect. like and then it yeah. was kind of through research then maybe it changed a little bit but more or less yeah, I knew from that's the start. what I wanted to do and uh I guess the moving elements in it represent, uh, it's like a snapshot of the daily activity in these places. So um, in the Dunleary one, you have the little uh, rectangular green forms that maybe represent like the dark, the train going yes. along the train line. And okay, then wow. there's like little, uh, other paper forms going along the harbor which are like people walking along yeah the the pier and then like triangular forms in the sea which could be boats or they could be i don't know people swimming or yeah like, okay wow it was swimming. it was quite yeah. nice the different uh like so many def different patterns to keep track of yeah it's quite hypnotic yeah. at times like it yeah. was nice just i'd say I'm, I'm very jealous that i didn't actually get to see it uh projected on the day but uh, even just in the in the short on the small screen it was quite nice oh thank you yeah and then and then for the two rock mountain there are some paper stones moving through it i guess that's just just to represent that there's the um uh, um, passage tomb that's covered underneath yeah and the okay well on the top. and then the rectangular forms they were kind of to represent like a, the you know the symbol the os symbol for a pathway on oh yeah maps. oh that's so cool it's, it's like people walking you know yeah through these these places as well um, that's cool i love hearing that because that's not something yeah. i got initially and it's nice yeah, to, yeah. Be able to kind of feel it's it yeah probably something that i just see myself but like, yeah i think it, it's nice when you have a rationale behind it and yeah. if you ever get asked that question you know what i mean <laughs> you're like what were the things and you're like they're just shapes you're like they were yeah, yeah. feels more uh you feel more solid then when you're like yeah. that's what they were I, ha I have an answer for that yeah um, totally. brilliant and can i ask when you applied to this open call mm. was there much so obviously for them to give you the kind of green light i'm sure they got a couple of applications how much of the project did you have to show like did you have to do any test footage or was it more kind of like text here's my idea or did you have to show anything visual of what it might look like yeah so in my proposal I had to um I, I showed a couple of sketches of how I wanted the animation to look like which were pretty close to actually how it turned out in oh, the brilliant. End. okay so i had thought a lot about uh, you know how i was going to realize the project before even applying because uh, it's important as well that you want to be able to deliver what you're, you're yeah asking what you're saying especially yeah. because you know the way some deadlines like this have a general um you know sometime in spring of blah oh. blah blah Whereas this obviously had a very specific, it's going to be projected on sure. you know, this date. Yeah, so yeah. You have to get it into it. So you're like, okay, <laughs> I need to make sure this is something I can do and deliver. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, so there was that. And then there was the text of the proposal explaining 
um, what I wanted to do and how I was going to make it and my reasons or the story behind it. And then uh, also a link to some other other animations, stop motion animations that I had done just to show them, I suppose, that to show them my previous you were work. kind of capable of and yeah yeah brilliant and can I that was actually going to be one of my next questions was mm-hmm. how much had you animated before this so from when that initial idea to animate occurred to you up until now had you done many kind of animated projects up until yeah. this point yeah I've, I, I've done a few quite a few and they're all following that similar you know uh, whether there's a, a static background of a landscape or maybe there's a figure in it and then there's smaller moving elements over the landscape which okay. kind of flow through it so there's not really a, a specific story I suppose that's the difference between like what we were talking about earlier that you know there's a difference between my work say and then animations that would have a story like a character or something it's yeah. more kind of abstract um, yeah. yeah yeah which is really really nice that I think you know animation lends itself to that that it's not every medium that you can do something that's quite story driven and something that's abstract and still appreciate both uh mm. you know on the same level yeah uh, so that's great so you had done a few yeah, animation tests up few, until this point quite a few yeah Brilliant. Um, and then for this particular project mm-hmm. did you feel the need to kind of test any of these movements out or when you sat down to do it were you like no this is going to be the real thing and i'm just gonna just gonna go for it um I didn't I didn't do any test animation I think I, pl- I played with the the flow the movement of the smaller pieces okay there and then uh, you know or I'd sketched more or less how I wanted the, the movement to go to go okay uh, but I think a lot most of the work was done before I got to that to the point of animating yeah. you know so it was all done in the in the, in the preparation and, and setting up the studio and all of that um all was that prep work so was done. all of that before I even started brilliant oh that that makes such a difference isn't it yeah. I mean you really do all that work and it just you kind of yeah. you know, unload all that so later on you're just you're kind of free of okay I've thought yeah. of everything or as much <laughs> yeah. as you can you're like yeah. I'm ready to go yeah. and can I ask one of the things that I I really stood out to me when I was looking watching passages for the first time was particularly in the Dunleary Harbour the mm. the colours of the sea uh, are just like kind of so that real nice kind of blue green murky uh what what kind of paints are you using or what kind of uh, texture or materials is that yeah uh so I think what really helps with that is that is a type of paper that I use as much as anything because I use this it's like thick tracing paper almost it's like this translucent paper which I paint on on like I paint on both sides of it and also there's another layer of paper underneath that which I painted as well so it gives you this nice you can play around with the transparencies and the depth yeah because it had a really nice like water quality to it I remember Mm. that's why initially I thought it was computer generated because I know from reading up on you i knew your 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 sort of focus was painting but when i was looking at it it just had a really nice like it felt layered yeah and we were looking down at it so that's why it really threw me off you know and you're like how is this made yeah Uh, so i was like i'll need to i need to ask you that if (laughs) i'm ever talking to her and And what what thickness would the tracing paper be um i i don't know like it's like it wouldn't be just normal like no it's not your normal no it's like this thick um uh, thick tracing paper i i well i'll have to look into that because it's i've never come across that before it sounds yeah well it was actually because i i another by accident thing that happened was because i was in it was i was living in madrid at the time and there was a a art materials shop near me and they, they specialized in paper and they had this this type of paper there and large sheets of it. And I actually started using it um, to put over the lamps to diffuse the light when I was shooting the um, Oh, wow. OK, that's crazy. <laughs> a little, uh, you know, just to, to, to do that. And then I start, I, I just one day started painting on it. Um, 
wow because it gives yeah. a really different finish mm. to like yeah. traditional yeah. paper again that's why i just assumed it was computer done because yeah. i was like it just yeah it didn't yeah. look like paper at all so that's yeah. incredible and then i paint and then i used um what did i use to paint on it i used a mixture of materials like color pencils polychromo pencils um pro markers oh wow um, posca posca acrylic paint markers and i think some oil pastels on top so there was a real real mixture of wow <laughs> and had you b before this project had you experimented with painting onto this tracing paper before or was this the first time oh i've used it before okay okay before yeah so I'd used it, for, it lends itself really well for painting the sea so i'd used it before for for making the sea and other kind of seascape stuff yeah. yeah yeah it just really stood out to me on that one i was just so interested to hear what kind of combinations because yeah. i was like I can imagine several and did that take a couple of attempts to get that right or were you able to kind of just like manipulate it as you went to to arrive with that sea like did you do a couple of versions of that or or was that just the one take i think that was the one thing it took a long time it took a long time yeah. to, to achieve it and there's times when i wasn't happy with it and uh, i had to you know just try something yeah that's always the way isn't it sometimes you you just get fed up and looking at it and you're like i, I need to yeah. i need to stop looking at this yeah, for a while because yeah. it can't be objective anymore yeah but i suppose especially for your film and again i'll get to this later on but because yours is one continuous shot you know what i mean mm -hmm. with the benefit of animation that's character driven let's say sometimes changing camera angle is almost like a cheat like the odd time when i've had something move in the set that i didn't want to you know someone kicks the tripod or something happens yeah and you can't get that exact setup again you're like okay i'll change to a different angle and we'll just say that that was a planned you know okay. shot change so you go from like a wide shot to oh that thing crashed on the set and I can't use it anymore. So you're like, I'll push in for a close up. Whereas I noticed with yours, it's the one shot continuous. So I guess it was worth spending the time to get the C right because you really do get, you know, a good while to take it all in. So it's worth oh, yeah, having, yeah. having it as detailed as possible. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, I hadn't thought about that, how you'd be able to to change things around if it wasn't just the one. One that's shot. the thing yeah, and i've seen i know you can obviously cut in when it's one angle but it's it's mm. a bit harder because especially for your project i think you're trying to show the general movement of the whole thing not mm -hmm. just here's a close-up of three or four of them moving i, I think you'd kind of lose that sense of the the flow of it oh, if you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. yeah um okay brilliant and can you just i suppose you kind of touched on the materials you were using there but again mm. on the harbor I've seen, uh, and your Instagram account is great um, for that kind of behind the scenes. I, I, I love the amount of people I follow on Instagram and it's purely for their behind the scenes. Like <laughs> here's a photo of me working on this thing. And you're like, I could eat, I could watch them all day. Uh, have you yeah. have a couple of shots of you cutting out the actual coastline of the harbor. Mm -hmm. What kind of materials and tools were you using to make that? Uh, I used a large sheet of, Paper. I have a large roll of drawing paper that I use, so that's just um, yeah, Fabriano papers. Oh wow! I, I for some reason it looks much thicker. That's just kind of normal, normal paper, yeah. is it? Wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, did it take you long to like? Did you have to? Obviously, I'm assuming you couldn't have got a shot of Dunleary Harbour like that. You would have had to just use kind of things oh, on use, the internet. Yeah, Google Earth. I use Google Earth to get the. Oh, brilliant. And yeah. did you have to trace something or were you doing that by hand or how did so you get it? For that, for just for the coastline, then I, I projected that and then I drew the the outline of the coast and then I I cut that out. Oh, and wow. Then, That's yeah. such a clever idea. So you just projected <laughs> it onto the paper. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then cut it out. Yeah. I had this vision of you printing off this massive you know coastline on trace paper and then yeah, trying, to, yeah. trying to hem me around but that's such a clever way of doing yeah, it if you have a yeah. kind of a projector wow and sure. did that did that take long to cut out um, and to get right it took oh it wasn't too bad it was more the the map then i don't know if that was too clear in the actual projection but it was there i made a map then of dunleary i mean it's not an exact exact map but it's uh 
just these blocked out shapes um that form a map uh, oh know. yeah just be like just kind of past the coastline yeah yeah, yeah. Wow. That, took, that took quite a while and was that you kind of just trying to sort of guess or take i suppose artistic license in terms yeah, of like this yeah. is roughly i wouldn't where... i wouldn't use it to get around with you yeah. <laughs> like that, but like... hey according to deirdre it should <laughs> yeah, be right yeah. here it was like uh, <laughs> maybe stick to google maps for that one okay yeah. and um, is that were they cut out in separate sections i made like... one large uh i i did that a couple of times actually because i wasn't happy with how it turned out first i had them all different colors and it just looked a bit garish against the the sea so then i okay i changed it and i had a painting of just a gray um sort of textured painting and then i cut out the shapes from that and then placed the shapes of the map onto the the white white coast okay. yeah it's so funny you say that actually that they started out in color because i think there is such a nice contrast between the the land and the sea because it's yeah. kind of white and then you get all that nice kind of murky blues and greens so uh, mm -hmm. I think yeah it would have been quite different thinking of it that the land was was colored in as well so and I think it might have been lost as well all of that you did might have been lost in the projection I think it was good to have that contrast yeah that difference great. between the two mm -hmm. yeah that I think that was really because definitely of the two I definitely uh really enjoyed the the, the harbour and I don't know if it's because of that contrast yeah uh, now that I think about it but it's so funny when you're starting out I, I take so many test photos when I'm doing animations you know especially with lighting I really like trying out different shades of light or different positions um, and normally I end up with more test photos than the actual you know animation itself but it's nice I think it's important to figure out even sometimes just a contrast just to say here's one here's two which do you prefer yeah it just helps you i think set yeah. one, one you actually like yeah. um okay cool and yeah so i mentioned your your instagram account and for, particularly for this project mm. i seen you had a really nice uh kind of notebook that documented mm. the whole process and can you talk a little bit about this just in terms of you know where you started and you know what was the kind of timeline on that on that book um the notebook i I started as soon as I think I even started the notebook when I was making the proposal for January before I had even. Oh, wow. OK, that's confidence. <laughs> I, I am getting this funding. <laughs> that was part of my proposal. I've already started on the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might as well <laughs> give me the funding. Me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I, I don't know, I really enjoy keeping notebooks I always have a few on the go depending on what project I'm working on and it's it was good for while I was doing research and um studying a bit about the history of of the harbour and oh, cool. of the of the passage tomb um it was good to keep notes on that and maybe that yeah. changed my ideas a bit and also just to experiment a bit with different materials like what you were saying with the uh, you know, I had a small section of the the tracing paper and tried out uh, the different colors to see what that would. Yeah, look like. I noticed there's a nice few different kind of color variations and and yeah. shapes and stuff like that. So you were just using it almost like as a kind of a scrapbook experimental yeah. kind of what works and what doesn't kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. from when you applied for the funding to when you uh, had to like actually deliver it, what kind of timeline was it? Like, was it a year or was it? six months it or was i think it was about eight eight or nine months i think okay i can't remember the starting date um probably would have been january or february last year then would it have yeah for, i can't yeah and it had over. to be i know it had to be delivered the end of all well it was for the end of august but then that got extended to the beginning of october we had to have everything finished okay. ready um, okay brilliant so yeah that, that was it i kind of had my own time i needed to have everything finished in the summer just because um i was going over to ireland then so i had to have everything finished up at the by the beginning of august so that oh, was okay why well, did you did you shoot all this in spain yeah oh brilliant okay yeah yeah that's cool 
I suppose. Yeah. And it's better for you then in a way to know, okay, I'm going back at that stage. So it has to be done. So you're kind of working backwards from that deadline. And then in terms of, would you say like the, the animation itself, when it came to obviously, you know, you have everything laid out up until that point, when would you say roughly what month did you actually start animating? Like, when did you have everything in place? The the paintings done? Oh, it was in, it was, um, everything was ready then. It was in June, July, I think it was. Okay, brilliant. Right in the... the yeah, right at crunch time. Somewhere here. Yeah, um, geez, I'd say actually having a... Because <laughs> did you say you had to black out the blinds and stuff? Black out the windows? Was, and... This was in my studio, um, my studio here. And I, which I which I was using for, I was giving workshops and everything there, but then that... That, that was empty during the summer. So uh, it has shutters. So I was able, I was able to block out the light, no problem. Oh, brilliant. It was, okay. still, it was still get very hot, but I couldn't turn on the fan because there's so many small little pieces. Oh, I never thought of that actually. Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine someone accidentally coming in going, Deirdre, it's pretty warm in here. Here, turn on the fan. <laughs> yeah, You're just like, yeah. no, <laughs> everything's gone. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, geez, I'd say it got quite, quite warm at times. Yeah, yeah. Um, but once everything was set up, I just had to had to animate and that, and that was it. And it, like it was great because that I had the studio space because I could just leave everything there and you can uh, leave it set up and there's no fear of yeah. yeah. And, and did they did they give you a specific runtime in terms of like we're looking for, you know, a five minute animation or we want a two minute or was it just like we want something roughly? The, the max was three minutes. Box is three. Minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And mine, anyway, with all of my animations, there it's the movement of the, you know, the paper forms going through, and then they will go back, and so that can go on loop, you know, as many times as. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, you, know, you kind of. Yeah. It's a nice. I think one of the uh, the arts of animation is uh, is those shortcuts, is knowing how to, you know. Yeah, like I, I always look at the classic like if you ever see someone's walk cycle you know when they're making a character walk the walk cycle is one of the most painstaking and difficult things to do because it's it's just your eye can tell straight away when something doesn't look right so right. there's so many scenes where you see someone's just walking from the waist up because then they don't have to worry about the legs and they can just do this and there's like buildings moving behind you know this way and I always look at that and I'm like yes there's there's someone who saved themselves like <laughs> hours of work yeah, uh, yeah so it's yeah it's always just that art of kind of figuring out okay <laughs> how can i get more and can i ask just in specifics what kind of frame rate do you shoot at when you're when you're animating um yeah so it would usually be around 15 to 20 frames oh wow okay but cool. it's not it's it's something that it's afterwards while i'm editing but i usually speed up anyway yeah. hmm. because i i want i know myself what, how i want the flow of the movement to go so it's so kind like, of yeah that, um that i decide on kind of afterwards afterwards and, i think yeah. that's what's great as well but because most of my most of my animations i shoot at uh, 12 uh, frames per second but i, I shoot doubles so I just take two photos for everyone. So technically I'm playing back at 24 frames. Uh, that, that's yeah. one of the things I learned from watching uh, um, behind the scenes videos of Aardman. Okay. I never knew. I used to hear people saying, oh, I shoot twos. And I was always like, yeah, like, I don't yeah. know what that means. And it was only when I saw it in a video and the guy was saying, you know, if you shoot on ones, it means you're shooting, you know, in a second, you're shooting 24 pictures. But if you, if you shoot twos, you're only shooting 12. And yeah. straight away, the shortcut in me was like, yeah. I'm going to shoot doubles. I, but, I shoot doubles too as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, nice. I think I, that was a tip that I picked up somewhere along the line as well. Yeah, and it is. I mean, it has still a really nice style to it. It's obviously, mm-hmm. if you shoot on ones, it's it's much smoother, much much more realistic. Like sometimes the puppets that they make move, you, you kind of, you forget that you're watching a puppet. Whereas yeah. I think when you shoot on twos, it is more animated. You know, it's a bit more rigid. But um, yeah, I can only, I think it's nice having the option afterwards to speed up or slow down, depending. Yeah. And your your software, what was the name of it again? Sorry, Digi? Oh, that's Dig- Digicam Control. That's just for shooting. Then. Oh, that's for, for shooting. Oh, what do you use to yeah. edit? Yeah, Premiere. 
and for oh cool okay and how yeah. do you how do you find it I, i'm on final cut pro myself i haven't made the move yet to uh, adobe but yeah. how do you find uh premiere pro good like just for i mean i know what to do i yeah. know how to do what i need to do yeah. and kind of <laughs> it, you know um yeah it was actually great in the beginning because a friend of mine uh barry he had the video production company in dublin so he uh, actually made a tutorial for me on what I needed to do and because oh, in the early days as well even though I had my very dodgy overhead tripod set up that was secure you know if I moved the paper you know the, the, the paper that was supposed to be static then then that made it jump so oh everything yeah god and stabilized it and gave me a few tips on that so but oh, brilliant yeah, we, we'll use and it is, I think with most editing software, it's kind of like there's a million things you can do, but there's only really a hundred things you specifically need yeah. to know for your particular thing. Because yeah. I'm sure if I got Premiere Pro, I'd probably be using slightly different functions to you for maybe what I needed it for. So I think yeah. one of the advantages of Adobe, because it's or Premiere Pro, because it's Adobe, is that it kind of speaks nicely to, I know you were saying you used a bit of Photoshop and stuff. Yeah. So obviously you can kind of move between them. Um, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so you were saying that from quite early on, you knew that kind of these were the two sets you were using, the mountain range and the harbor. Was there yeah. anything that had kind of changed from that initial idea or anything that you kind of added in as you as you studied and, and learned more about the places? Yeah, well, I think through doing the research. Um, I, well, I wanted to see if there was any connection between the two sites. And I had the Passage Tomb and the Cairn in the summit of, of Two Rock Mountain, which is known as Fairy Castle. So I had these oh, wow. stones cool. going across and I was thinking about how people you know, brought these stones up the mountain to build a structure. And then also like for Dunleary Harbour, people there was about a thousand workers um, during the 19th century who brought stones from brought rock from Dalkey quarry down a railway there used to be a railway that ran from the quarry right, right down to the to the harbor wow yeah so i wanted to have a little nod to that so i i there are stones running along as well as the train um, oh that's, that's cool I love that. And I, yeah. again, I love just hearing kind of about the, the sort of history behind the decision to use these. And was that something that you were kind of like just stumbled upon or were you specifically trying to find connections between like the two I sites? Think, I was interested to see if there was any. And then it was while reading up about the places that I thought, that, you know, that I could make this yeah. visual connection. Oh, that's a, that's a really nice yeah. uh, way of connecting them and i love that because on you know you can look at the uh the short uh passages on just sort of surface level and just appreciate mm. the nice moving shapes and i think hearing a little bit more about the kind of history and explanation behind it just helps add that extra kind of that extra layer to it so yeah. it's great and i know obviously this you knew from the beginning that this project was going to be projected so mm because i've seen some of the other examples that were projected as well none of them have sound because there obviously wasn't going to be any mm. kind of speakers or anything there in the day is sound or music is that something you've thought about possibly adding in like after to go along with it yourself or or, or, or do you always plan to keep it uh, silent it wasn't something yeah because it wasn't required for the the commission it wasn't something that i had had considered so okay um, no no, I no. okay yeah no yeah. that's completely fair. you know the way sometimes i've seen <laughs> sometimes there's certain stipulations i've known uh uh friends of mine who've made you know entries for two minute film festivals and it has to be two minutes you can tell sometimes the film is meant to be longer because it just abruptly ends and then oh, I've seen them okay. release it afterwards and they're like, yeah, I, I completely missed time two minutes. So the ending's a bit weird. And then you see the actual version afterwards, it's two minutes, 30 seconds. And you're like, mm -hmm. got to add in the rest. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. people like to go back, but. Um, I want to add the music. I don't know. I just haven't snow it. I think it's kind of nice as well without, without sound. Yeah, it works. Other animations um, I'd consider 
consider adding music or song, but for this one, no. And I think it's nice because that was part of the brief, like that it didn't yeah. require it. You knew it was all focused on the image. Um, mm. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of nice. Um, mm. And there, so I, I kind of referenced this earlier, just all your 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 moving pieces when it actually came mm -hmm. to animating. So all these, again, I, I don't know, I hadn't actually gotten to count them, but it was like, <laughs> must be at least 50 in some. Was it like very hard to keep track of? Did you have a system or, or how did you actually physically animate all these shapes? So I I moved, I didn't, well, did I have a system? I, I, I suppose I did have a system in that I always went in the same direction or right? okay. so say for example with the harbor one if there was the triangle triangles in the sea I would start by moving those first and then maybe the little uh, forms that were on the pier then they'd be next and then the the stones and the train would be next so I'd always do the same okay so you'd work yeah. all, the, all the time um, and on your software were you able to see like were you able to toggle between your current and your last to see, yeah. make sure everything had moved. Yeah, you were able to do that. And But I think the thing is like, because there are so many pieces, like I think it's harder to animate like one character or character on screen because okay. like when there's so many pieces and it's, it's kind of this one movement, I think it's more forgiving in that, like if there is a bit of a jump or a hop, like it's not so obvious. Yeah. And um, whereas when, when that's like just with one, character it looks you know it can look a bit jumpy. yeah no that's so true it's funny to hear you say that because like coming into this i'd be like your way is definitely harder you know mm -hmm. i suppose it's just what you're used to but uh yeah. yeah i get what you mean that your focus is on that one character like both your eyes yeah. are on this whereas i think you're generally following the patterns mm -hmm. not the specific stone exactly. or triangle or circle exactly. so yeah so kind of forgive a bit of hops it's it's not yeah you, you won't really notice it and yeah. was there any disastrous moments where you played something back and you were like oh no that that just doesn't look right I have to do that again or was it it was nicely that you were just kind of chipping away at it and it always it worked out okay it worked out okay okay yeah. that's amazing yeah because yeah. honestly in my opinion and my experience when something doesn't go right the first time it's very rare that I improve it like yeah. that same day I normally kind of have to walk away from it because you're just always comparing it to oh but no the first part of that was better but I prefer oh the second, yeah I know, you know? Yeah. and you drive yourself mad then kind of yeah. going no you just yeah. like walk away and so most times when you come back the first one is actually all right you know you were maybe being a bit too picky or too focused on something yeah. but uh no I'm glad to hear it worked out yeah I think maybe because I've done so many with you know that are similar of this kind of small moving pieces across the static background I've definitely had to repeat some of those ones before so maybe it's just from experience and just experience brilliant that. yeah no perfect and you were saying you mentioned having these in a in a studio mm. is this and something you know the advantage that you were able to kind of keep it set up um, mm -hmm. how, how long would you say roughly you spent uh, did you spend filming it um it was over it was over maybe two or three weeks i think okay that's not too bad but i like different different times so sometimes i'd only get like a couple of hours and then i'd have to come back to it or and did you know, find when when you'd come back did you ever find that things were slightly different like lighting or something had moved slightly or was it always more or less as you'd left it it was always more or less okay as, perfect as, yeah yeah genuinely so sometimes. Maybe, yeah, so maybe like this the actual setup uh, like that would have taken a lot of time but then the shooting yeah. itself i tried to just get that all done you know go. over over a couple of days or you know yeah. to, like, you know just because of, you had that risk of <laughs> If I leave it, you know, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I, uh, yeah, I always have that uh, feverish nightmare when you're like in the middle of something. I, I always try and just get that shot done. Now, again, because of the nature of like character driven stuff, you can kind of get away with most of my scenes will have a wide, a mid and a close up. So I'm like, even if I just get the wide shot done, I can leave it because the mid shot's yeah. going to look different. But in your example, because it's all one continuous shot, yeah. I'd say there was a few like, I hope this is 
yeah. hope this is still yeah. here when I come back tomorrow. Yeah. Some wind hasn't crept in. And you're just exactly. like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm starting again. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, brand. Well, I suppose this moves us nicely on to um, the kind of advice section. Is it try and break this podcast into three sections where we talk a bit, a bit about your backstory, then we focus on the, the film itself. And, and now this point is just kind of, I suppose, your experience. And exactly like you touched on there about how this one ran smoother because you kind of have developed that kind of style for yourself. Yeah. You've done other works on it before. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I was gonna I was gonna talk a bit about you had mentioned it earlier about the aspect ratio because that was um, oh sorry, yeah, actually that, that was um so, that something difficult that did crop up because I had I had shot say the, the mountain one, the one of Fairy Castle. I'd already finished shooting that, and then we had a meeting with the uh the technicians with the algorithm who were in charge of projecting the animations onto um the side the, of the lexicon um, wasn't it yeah. yeah and they they wanted to work with a three to one ratio which is that, that yeah. longer ratio which worked like amazingly which looked great on the building like yeah you know, it totally worked but i had been working on 16 to 9 aspect ratio up to then and that's what i had you know, planned and 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 that's what I had already shot with the with the mountain one. So Jeez. yeah. So luckily when I cropped that one, because everything that you, you see for the mountain one is as it's shot. Like that's why even even with the lighting and everything, I tried to get that right so that there's not too much editing I have to do in photos yeah. afterwards. It's kind of done in camera. So all yeah. I had to do was crop that and actually I preferred the composition of that when it was cropped to three to one so that oh, that's funny isn't it yeah yeah you're um, like oh that actually kind of looks nicer yeah but then with the harbor one because you have the two piers that just cropping it just wasn't an option so um i'd already made the set um to to work with a 16 to 9 ratio so then i had the problem of I couldn't crop it, so I needed to. I, I didn't know if it was going to work or not, so I had to uh, make. I had to make a new section of the the coastline on one side, and then another part on the other side. On the other side, and also because I had this movement going through the sea, I thought it would look really weird if it was just on one part of the okay. uh, the animation. So then I had to. Uh, when, once I finished shooting it as if it was 16 to 9 then I had to kind of shoot another part with um, triangles kind of moving on both sides so that it would all flow together so then uh, then afterwards in editing there was a there was I had to do a lot of um, editing in photoshop to try to stitch did you have whole... to composite them together yeah exactly wow. exactly yeah yeah god so, i never would have known that from looking at yeah. it yeah oh good, good. yeah geez yeah. i can't believe that's that's kind of tough isn't it to like it, how, how far into this project were they like actually we're going to do three <laughs> to one you're like wait what <laughs> well i think yeah i know because i think the, they the technicians they were contracted sort of later on so we the animators had already been selected and then i think later the algorithm came on board and 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 it did really suit the building. I was really happy with how yeah. it came out. But it was quite challenging. And then even like my my partner is um he's a computer, he writes code and is a computer genius, although he would reject that term. But yeah. <laughs> he found some software online that helped me to kind of stitch uh the, the separate images together so it got quite wow. complicated but it does honestly i like i would never have known that that was I, i'm genuinely looking forward to now watching it again uh, yeah with that in mind because it was uh i never would have known they were two separate yeah, good because i want it was really important to me that it looked seamless yeah so, i mean there was a bit of um like everything was painted as you saw but there was a bit of you know they did a tiny bit of digital painting trying to stitch the whole thing just to kind of uh, bring them together yeah. okay well that's completely um, fair but uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that it that it worked out. Yeah, yeah. I can and only I imagine that, that conversation. Really that conversation as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool because again, yeah. when you 
I think I watched it on Vimeo and uh, mm. it's such an unusual, like I, I'm used to, you know, when you watch something that you've made, it, typically the stuff I've made is 16 nine. So when you go full screen, you know, you're getting the full screen. Mm. And, you know, when you watch a film, it's that wide screen where you get in the black bars. But I remember watching yours and I was like, oh, wow, this is, yeah, this is quite an unusual, uh, but, but it works. And I, I can only imagine that it looked yeah. uh, great on the side of the museum as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, geez, that's crazy. I can only imagine, yeah, being in on that call where it's like, yeah, we're going to change the aspect ratio. Sorry. Uh, like just, yeah, yeah, you'll figure it out. But I'd say, has that kind of stood to you now? Do you think you would use, like, at least it's good to have that in your back pocket, that compositing that you know, Oh, maybe there's something oh, yeah, there in the future. Good. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they were open to if it doesn't work out, they, you know, that's it. it would have. Would have figure something out. It was, you. but I didn't want to leave it um, with black bars on the side. I really wanted it. Yeah. To work out. Yeah, Not and, and that's the thing, it's like, you know, from from everything, you pick up skills here and there, and you'll use them again down the line for another project. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, that's great. Um, so yeah sorry it would have been such an awful waste not to have uh, to have heard that because i think there's so many things especially when you get into the the funding or even if it's a you know a, a, some sort of commissioned work there are there can be like kind of wrenches thrown at you or speed bumps along the way that you yeah. kind of have to negotiate and i think that's the great thing about mixed materials both traditional and digital there's mm. always a solution uh you know what i mean maybe it's not what you had in mind initially but I think if you're of that mindset that you can kind of adapt and go with it, yeah, you really can achieve some great, like who someone had said to you, oh, you could use a computer to composite these things together at the start. You probably would be like, nah, yeah. I'd rather do it all. My But now that you know you have that as an option, um, I'm sure it will really kind of stand to you going forward. Yeah. yeah. And just while we're kind of moving into the last section, the advice, just in general, because I think your perspective on animation is, is really, really interesting because you've come from fine art and kind of stumbled into animation purely kind of through experiment. And maybe I'll explore this option. Would you have any advice for anyone kind of starting out in animation, be it like, a, you know, software or, or just something that you learned at the start that could help? Um, well, I think if you have an interest in it, just, just go for it. If you have an idea and you want to make something and, like it might not work out as as you plan, but you like you learn from it, and then the next time you can use those skills and go ahead. And I mean, there's so many tutorials online. Like you make some yourself, Joe Suffren. It's like anything you want to do. Maybe you won't know all of the tricks of the trade, but if you want to make do something specifically, you'll be able to find to find it. Yeah, it is. It's incredible, isn't it? The uh, the kind of scope of tutorials that are yeah. out there. It's not just how to animate. There can be like how to animate a dog chasing it you know there's sometimes yeah. you're like how is there a tutorial for this but yeah like yeah. and if there's not a tutorial there's sometimes there's an example at least yeah and and, I, and you don't need any any fancy equipment or anything like you can just use your phone and you know free software and, and that's yeah it. and then if you are interested in it then maybe then you can invest in, in better, better yeah equipment. No, I think that's great because it is sometimes I think it can be disheartening because normally, you know, the thing that exposes you to an art form, like say stop motion is kind of top flight industry leaders like Aardman or Leica. So you're mm. watching something like Coraline or Wallace and Gromit and you're going, oh, I want to do that. And, yeah. you know, obviously there are there's millions of uh, you know dollars or euros gone into it and hundreds of people working on these things. So you yeah. judge yourself off that it can be a bit disheartening, but I think you're so right that you just start because I think with most of these things, they start out as a passion, as a hobby. You're mm. not, not generally speaking, your first job. It's more like you're doing this in your spare time. So why not just kind of go for it? Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, when you're yeah. animating, is there any kind of hacks or things that you find useful? Like, do you like listening to music or is there anything you do while you animate just to kind of help you I suppose pass the time or, or focus? Um, probably when I'm doing the actual animation, uh, I, uh, yeah, I listen to music. Probably when I'm doing that, it's more instrumental, like in introspective kind of yeah. music, just to get me into that. 
just a, yeah in my headspace yeah, yeah okay yeah. perfect or sometimes I do I listen to podcasts and I like listen to podcasts about um artists or creatives and their their process like um just to feel like I have a bit of company yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true isn't it because sometimes it can be uh you, know, you spend like you said a couple of hours doing these and generally speaking you're you're uh you're by yourself you know when you're animating or or yeah. uh, even when you're making the set so it's nice yeah to feel like you have a have a bit of company or something definitely yeah yeah and it, do you have a do you have a show reel or a website at all um that you use i don't have a show reel i do have a website um, okay perfect yeah um we might leave a, a link to that below sure. as well yeah. just yeah, so people can kind of check out your work and, and do you find like has a website been useful for you like have you had it a while do you find it it kind of yeah i've benefits? had it for years it's 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 your online portfolio and um, yeah yeah so it's changing all the time i need to do a bit of a change on it now and so yeah it's important to to be selective i think with what you put up there and always to, to edit it and uh, it's just a good way for people to see yeah is that where you direct people mostly is to, to your website yeah yeah Perfect. okay yeah, yeah it's brilliant i've seen uh, i've found that more and more, more and more people are kind of moving away from kind of the show reels into having a website because i think it's just i don't know if it's easier to access because you just give someone a web address you know what right. i mean they can view it anywhere or is it that you can have your complete works you know they normally show reels a very snapshot like just, clips yeah, yeah, yeah. i think it's yeah. nice for people to be able to browse your work at their yeah. at their own pace um yeah. do you have just in terms of advice as well obviously this um light up dunleary was a commissioned work and i know mm -hmm. a lot of budding artists out there the goal is to turn your you know your ambition and your hobby into maybe something that can you know pay the bills or at least pay part of the bills is there any advice that you would have for people when it comes to kind of seeking that commissioned work be it um you know through funding like this or any tips or tricks you'd have for that um well i think just um well for this one for light up to me when i saw the proposal or the open call I knew that my work would be a good fit for what they were looking for. So I think yeah. um, it's really through through practice um, that you you, you kind of you get to see that that uh, you know in your experience from applying for things, you know what will work for you and what maybe yeah. isn't for you. But I think just be be positive and 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 apply for for things. And uh, I know what it's like being on the other side of it because I've I've organized exhibitions. Okay. Saying, wow. I open calls for exhibitions. Uh, so I know what it's like from that side where you're receiving lots of work and okay. And you're having to assess and yeah, of... yeah. So um I guess it's really important to uh make the lives of the the, the judge or whoever easier. make their life easier yeah you know and uh have an interesting proposal or good images or good links or, and i think that's that's a great point just to kind of i suppose it sounds like such an obvious thing to say but to just really look at what the like kind of thing the finished product that they're hoping for is and does it match your style because again there's so many forms of animation out there that you know yeah. some look for more story driven some more abstract some's a particular medium like does your style fit that bill and there, there's no harm obviously in applying but i guess it's trying to learn from that you know we all get many more rejections than we do acceptance but yeah. i suppose it's just learning this actually suits my yeah my style or you know this doesn't that kind of thing just to pick and choose perfect yeah. Yeah. um one of the questions i always ask people which it's a tough answer uh to have but how do you get through like an uninspiring day because we all have those days where everything's going great you're looking at the work and it's just turning out great and it's just feeding you and you could work for hours and hours and then we have those days where nothing's going right and it's just feels like it's slipping further and further away how do you how do you cope with a day like that yeah yeah uh well i guess uh, it's important to to take breaks and just 
go out, go out for a walk and step away her, from it. Her, step away from it. Um, and I suppose when you have deadlines, um, you know, when you're you're under a bit of pressure to to make something work, uh, you, you you have to get on with it a bit. But yeah. Also, the notebook is really helpful as well. Like maybe if you're working on a project, it's not going so well, you can go to the notebook and make something simple. Like I, I, as I was saying earlier, like I work a lot with, with cutouts. So sometimes I will just arrange paper cutouts on the page and play with balance and form and, and, and be happy with a, you know, a, a simple activity like okay, that. So maybe go back to something miniature and yeah. I suppose help build up your confidence again, just to be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and just that do looks good. Out, of the, out of the enjoyment of doing it. So. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I love that. That's brilliant. Because yeah. I suppose that's why most people get into it in the first place. You know, yeah. it is just for the enjoyment. It's awesome. a kind of a release, so it's nice. Yeah. Um, perfect. And is there anything, anything that your, you know, specific goals at the moment you have, or any projects that you have coming up, um, that you'd yeah. like to mention? Uh, well, I have loads and loads of paper stones left over from making okay, nice. that I'd love to animate them so that's maybe a possible project that I will do and then there's also um, a project coming up next year which is in its very early days so I can't talk too much about that okay um, but you um, have kind of stuff coming up I have stuff going on yeah nice. yeah and um and a, a commission that I have to to work on now as well so okay nice there's always that that lovely moment when you get that commission and it's very exciting and you, and then you're like and it always hits that middle point where you're like oh i have to just get this done now yeah. you know, over the honeymoon phase and you're like they they expect results yeah um and it's perfect we touched on i suppose a little bit your your instagram and your website mm -hmm. where is the the best place for anyone listening who maybe you know might have a question or or like to follow up with you where's the best place to to reach you get in touch with you Oh, yeah, well, you can get in touch with me through through my website, dirgeburn.com. Um, and there's a contact page there or through my Instagram, which is ddrawburn. OK, <laughs> nice. Dedrawburn. Yeah. So, yeah, if you leave a link for that, yeah, I'd be happy to hear. hear from Perfect. People. Perfect. Uh, yeah. It's nice to have, you know, they sometimes you just you see the work and, and you might have a specific question uh, that we didn't didn't cover or even just to check it out because genuinely for anyone who hasn't uh, hasn't seen your your instagram once you see the film i think it's so nice to go through that and see some of the images you posted of you know whether it's you cutting out the coastline or even just the notebook as you as you were kind of forming things together it's yeah. great it gives you a nice okay. insight thanks Joe. but thanks. just want to say deirdre thank you so much i know we've gone a bit over time but thanks for being so generous with your time and uh for coming on the show oh thanks a million joseph i really enjoyed it Thank oh you. same to you and, and look have a good evening and uh, i'm sure we'll talk again okay take care take it easy so that's it for this episode of cartoon cosmonauts i'd like to say a huge thank you to my guest deirdre byrne for coming on to the show and talking about her short animation passages if you'd like to get in touch with deirdre you can do so through her website or on instagram i'll leave links to everything in the description below and if you'd like to get in touch with me, perhaps with some questions, feedback, or even to discuss your own short on the show, then you can find me online at Speak Broccoli on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Just look for the green broccoli logo. You can also email speakbroccoli at gmail.com. Thank you for taking the time to join me here today. I've been your host, Joseph Orr, and you've been listening to the cosmic sounds of Cartoon Cosmonauts.